When I first arrived in China, I had a small suitcase and a plan to stay for 12 months. I thought that I knew what to expect. Pollution, poverty and piracy, but not the seafaring kind. Instead, in those first few weeks, I explored Beijing under APEC blue skies and discovered a city becoming a centre for innovation. I had a lot to learn. Now, that very same suitcase has accompanied me over the past four years as I've gambled around the country, often for work and sometimes for pleasure. From the mountains of Sichuan to the plains of Inner Mongolia, from the heaving metropolis of Shanghai to isolated villages in Guizhou, I have been witness to the grit, determination and limitless ingenuity of people who want nothing more than a better life for their families and themselves. Four decades ago, our kids in the West were at the movies, mesmerised by Luke Skywalker's destruction of the Death Star. Whole swathes of the Chinese population were living hand to mouth. But a revolutionary idea was taking root in China's barren economic soil. An idea that would change the lives of hundreds of millions of people in unimaginable ways. And what was this revolutionary idea? Well, it was nothing less or more than what we all know today as reform and opening up. For sure, reform and opening up has brought about perhaps the greatest social and economic miracle that the world has ever seen. But today, around 30 million people in China still have to get by on less than one dollar per day. What's being done to help them? What should be done? What can be done? I was recently in Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region. Most of the region is desert and in the south, an average of one millimetre of rain a day is considered a good year. After generations of eking an existence, whole communities have had no choice but to up sticks and just move to the north, where the Yellow River nourishes the yellow earth. They now sow the seeds of their own destiny on arable land and in profitable businesses. Their children are educated at good universities. There are doctors to take care of the oldies. From tilling the earth to gazing at the stars. While some are faced with problems as old as civilization, others are looking at problems never before encountered on the face of this earth. This year, I was lucky enough to meet three of the most extraordinary people that I have ever encountered. These men and women who boldly go where almost no one has been before explain to me in just 20 years how China's manned space program has gone from big dreams to a very real plan to have a fully operational space station in orbit by 2022. In just 40 years, a nation of farmers has become the hypermarket of the world and a crucible of scientific and commercial advance. With 25,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, no other nation can compete with China's power and speed to deliver goods to where they are needed. It is possible to travel from Xi'an of Terracotta Army fame the home of the giant panda in Chengdu, which is over 700 kilometers to the south, in a Wall Street banker's lunch break. And I should know, I did it. The rugged, breathtaking route once took 13 hours, and my journey took three. Last year, about one third of global economic growth was down to China. What happens in China has profound and unavoidable consequences for the global economy and people outside China. As China has changed, so too has its priorities. When China sent a man to space, the sky 
cease to be the limit. Where then is the limit? I have the feeling that China isn't done surprisingly just yet.